Hey everyone, welcome to our webinar and thanks for joining. Today's webinar is Ventures Made Easy with CWX Devices. Our presenter is Ian O'Neill, Regional Sales Manager at Roland DGA. If you guys have any questions, please type them into the question box and they will be addressed at the end of the webinar. But now I'm gonna turn it over to Ian. Hey everybody, Katie, thank you for the introduction. Uh, thank you for joining today, taking the time out of your uh, busy productions to hop on the computer and uh, take a look at what the latest and greatest that Roland has to offer. So uh, as Katie stated, my name is Ian O'Neill and I'm the Eastern U.S. Uh, sales Manager with Roland DGA, DG Shape. And uh, let's, uh, let's dive into this presentation here. So as Katie said, uh, please enter your questions into the box to your right as we go through and at the very end we will save time to cycle back and uh, try to answer any of the questions that you have okay uh, and just so you all know I cannot hear you so please make sure you type in your questions so we'll get started so today as you already know we're going to talk about the Roland uh, the Roland denture kit the TRK system the TRK st stands for time reduction kit so what we're doing is trying to take traditional analog workflows and incorporate them into your uh, digital production, like the Roland mill. So what we're gonna cover, the agenda we're gonna review is an overview of our mills, the three mills that we currently offer, one of which is the DWX52D, the DWX52DCI, and then we will cover a review of the Denture TRK system, which goes into those two mills, and then we will close with a demonstration of the nesting procedures with the Millbox software. So let's get right into it. So why Roland? Roland, uh, many of you are probably very familiar with if you walk into a laboratory today, more often than not, you're going to run into uh, a Roland mill in someone's production if they've gone digital. Uh, it, is, it is the most popular dental mill on the market today. And as of last February, we sold our 10,000th mill globally. So that was a great time for us. So uh, Roland has a pretty deep history. Roland was started in 1972, founded in Osaka, Japan, and it does a variety of things. So you may be familiar with the brand Roland. You may have seen keyboards if you're into music or maybe playing a band, uh, synthesizers, boss guitar pedals, uh, or speakers. Uh, we also have a very, very popular, and one of the most prominent lines of large bed printers, which do things like print the um, the shrink wrap graphics that would go on the NASCARs that you see out on the track. So very, very versatile. The technology used in all of those applications is very similar, and which is why Roland continues to grow the brand in what its equipment is capable of. So a very deep history. Some of that history and the, the way that we got to where we are today with our dental equipment is the 3D prototyping machines that we've had in the past, whether it be jewelry, engraving, um, you know, 3D prototyping from wood, uh, that has all led us to where we are today with our Roland mills. Again, the number one choice of U.S. dental labs. And that is our flagship mill there, the DWX52 DCI. One of the reasons that we, we are able to create such reliable equipment is our history, our history of building spindles and creating these types of uh, pieces of equipment in the past. So today, Roland offers three different types of mills. Uh, one that we're not going to talk too much about today is the DWX42W. This is our offering as a wet mill. This machine is four axis. It takes uh, block materials, whether it be uh, nano hybrid ceramic, a lithium silicate, lithium dye silicate, or a PMMA block. Uh, this would be a great solution for somebody who's pressing a lot and would like to go digital. Uh, it's also a great chair side solution. So that's our DWX42W. It holds three blocks at a time and has uh, three different types of milling that you can choose from, a high quality, a fast high quality, and a standard milling option, depending on what you're looking for out of your restoration and how quickly you need to produce it. So that is our DWX42W. If you have more questions on that, you can uh, always reach out to me or reach out to your Zon rep for more information. Uh, they're very knowledgeable in this equipment. Next is the DWX52D, which has been on the market uh, since February of 2018, so coming up on two years now. This is our five-axis dry mill. 
and its big brother, the DWX52 DCI, which is our five axis disc changer mill. So this is our ultimate and unattended production. You can load this machine uh, with six pucks, go home for the night, come in in the morning, and remove all of your work completed. So this is our flagship piece of equipment and our, our best production option for when utilizing the Denture TRK system. So let's touch on the DWX52D really quickly. Uh, when you purchase this mill, this mill comes with six disc adapters. That means that you're going to be able to house up to six uh, material blocks or pucks inside of these adapters at one time, which makes for quick transition in and out of the machine. No longer do you have to use a uh, torque wrench every time you want to place a puck inside of the mill. It's a simple slide into position and you turn two plastic knobs to lock it into position to go ahead with your milling procedure. Uh, each mill box software or each software that runs your mill would be able to accommodate 26 of these and keep track of them. So this streamlines your loading operation for your material pucks. This machine automatically calibrates. What that means is we use a calibration device instead of having to mill out some sort of block or object and have to measure it manually. So this eliminates that step. It eliminates the potential for human error by uh, not zeroing your micrometer uh, and entering the values incorrectly. So this is a quick procedure. It takes under seven minutes to run a standard calibration with our mills and uh, you're up, or up and running very quickly from that regular maintenance. So it also comes with a disc adapter rack. So instead of stock, stacking all of your pucks on top of each other next to your mills, as I've seen so many times in dental labs, we provide you with a rack that allows you to stand them up, uh, keep them from making contact with each other, keeping them clean and keeping them organized. So that's a nice little accessory uh, add-on. Uh, we also have our vPanel software, which is available for free at no cost on our website. And this is the brain of your rolling mill. This tells the mill when to start, when to stop, when you're adding a fresh tool, when a tool is expired, or when you need to perform maintenance. So all of this is offered to you on our RolandDGA.com website. As I stated before, this is a five axis mill. Uh, all five axes can run simultaneously, which gives you the best milling result for undercut types of restorations, whether it be all on four, denture, RPD. It gives the mill the ability to get into those hard to reach places and mill out as much detail as possible. You're spending a lot of time in your designs, more than likely, and we wanna see uh, the final result reflected in your final milled object. So we've moved on from the 50, uh, where we used a wire drive system, to a ball screw drive system. So this is a different way of moving our ax axes around the machine. Uh, it's more accurate. It allows for the machine to move slowly and precisely, overall giving us a better milled result, and it's more reliable. There's less chance of you needing to uh, retighten your wires or make any adjustments to your wire drive system. We've also added in the 52 mils, which is new from the 50 and the 51D, automatic air pressure control. So previously, if you own a Roland mill, you might be aware uh, where a material changes, you would have to make an adjustment to your air regulator. Uh, milled zirconia debris being much lighter, you don't want a lot of air pressure blowing on it, blowing around the mill. Uh, PMMA, you would want more air pressure to remove that debris from, uh, from the milling area. So now the system is able to pick up the PRN file, which is the milling file, and tell the machine how much air pressure it needs to use for that exact job. So no more manual process where you have to make adjustments to the air pressure regulator. We also have a built-in ionizer for easy PMMA cleanup. If you've milled PMMA in a mill before, you know uh, without an ionizer, it sticks to everything. It has that static charge from your suction unit and it takes quite a while to go ahead and clean up. So this makes your uh, maintenance procedures much easier, uh, transition between materials like zirconia to PMMA much, much quicker. Uh, a great feature about Roland Mills is that we now offer user replaceable spindles. So that is in the 51 and the 52 mills. Uh, we do allow the customer to purchase a spindle from, the, uh, from their dealer and go ahead and, and replace the spindle on their own. We will uh, ship out the spindle. We'll also provide you with instruction or the dealer will provide you with instruction in a video 
to go ahead and replace that by yourself. It's a very simple procedure, which allows you to be up and running if your spindle was to wear out uh, and get you up and running again very quickly. We also offer an optional cleaning tool, which is essentially like a small paintbrush that's gonna go inside of your restorations at the end of the milling procedure and remove any uh, particles or debris that might be inside the cavities. Or, um, which in the past, if you haven't maybe cleaned out your restorations post milling as much as you should have, you went over to center and now you had that powdered debris inside of your cavity, which is now sintered zirconia and your restorations aren't fitting properly, uh, the cleaning tool can help you with that to make sure your restorations are clean when they come out of the machine. So it is optional, it's not something you must utilize, but it's something that we do provide. We've also upgraded uh, our tool holders. We are now able to hold 15 tools. So we have a 15 tool, uh, 15 tool uh, station, which will allow you to house, house zirconia tools, PMMA tools, or hybrid tools if you chose to mill uh, hybrid blocks inside of your dry mill. The machine automatically knows what tools it needs for the job, goes ahead and picks them up, or it gives you the ability to set up sister tools uh, where if you were milling zirconia, your tool life expired, uh, the mill would put that tool back into the tool holder and continue with a fresh tool. And last but not least, on the very bottom of this machine is the storage drawer. This is great because it might seem very simple, but it's very, very nice because I'm sure as most of you work in labs, things go missing quite frequently, whether it's a implant driver, maybe your favorite uh, brush, your favorite porcelain brush. This gives you a way to store everything you need, all of the accessories for the mill inside of a drawer in the bottom of the machine. So that is our DWX 52D. This machine is capable of milling zirconia, wax, PMMA, composite resins, peak, pectin, trilore type materials, gypsum. So if you wanted to go ahead and mill models uh, in this system with our model TRK system, you could. And we're also able to mill chrome cobalt sintered metals, which would be a metal uh, that would require sintering inside of an argon furnace. So we are able to mill all of these materials inside of the machine. The spindle speed uh, is 30,000 RPMs. We do not need to go higher because we're not milling glass ceramics inside of this machine. The rotary axis in the B is 30 degrees. Our air compatibility, this mill only requires 30 PSI per mill. So it's very, very low. It's not invasive on the, the air compressor that you currently have, whether it's a lab or a clinic. So it's very, very simple uh, to incorporate without draining some of your other workstations or equipment. Uh, it's operating decibel is 70 decibels when it's milling. And the weight of the, of the 52D is just under 150 pounds. This machine accepts 98.5 millimeter diameter pucks. The minimum height that it would be able to accept in that holder is 10 millimeters, and the maximum height of a puck would be 35 millimeters in height. So moving on to the flagship mill, the DWX52 DCI. Uh, the ultimate in production, unattended production. Uh, you're not paying somebody overnight to stay there uh, second or third shift and swap out pucks to mill different types of jobs. This machine holds six pucks at one time. We'll swap them out automatically and choose the proper tool for the job assigned to it. So again, automatic tool changer machine, uh, disc changer machine. We do offer a performance software for free at this time on our website. This software is downloadable at no charge. It would allow you to download it to your computer and it's going to monitor things like uh, what types of material you're using the most, uh, your tool life, which mills you're using more frequently than others, and gives you the ability to generate reports, not only for your maintenance procedures, but for your ordering. So if you, you come to the realization you're stocking too many of one shade, maybe you're not using a thir certain thickness of a puck, it gives you the ability to easily identify all that information and uh, go ahead and make adjustments to your ordering. Optical barcode reader, so that we have an optical barcode reader which scans each puck that's housed inside of the machine to assign it to the proper job, pick it up, uh, and bring it into the milling chamber. Again, automatic calibration, just like the 52D, no need for milling objects and measuring them and entering the values into a software. Uh, just like the 52D, the vPanel software is available for free and it is the brain of your Roland mill. Five axis simultaneous milling 
just like the 52D, giving you the ability to mill undercuts in, in much better detail. Ball axis screw drive, which we covered with the 52D, more precise, slower moving parts, and more accurate. We again have the automatic air control. We also have the ionizer inside of this machine, and this machine too has the user replaceable spindle, where in the event your spindle wears out over time, uh, you would be able to go ahead and replace it on your own without waiting for somebody to come on site or ship your mill out to have it repaired. We have the optional cleaning tool again and the 15 station automatic tool changer. This is a quick uh, example of what that software would look like, the monitoring software. So this is uh, how it would track the information of what pucks you're using the most of, and allows you to generate your reports based off of each mill. And the DWX 52 DCI will mill just like the 52 D zirconia's wax, PMMA, composite resins, peak pecton, trilore material, uh, gypsums, and chrome cobalt sinter metals. Just like the 52 D, 30,000 RPMs, 30 degrees of milling capability in the B-axis, and again, uh, 30 PSI for compressed air. The only thing that our mill is using compressed air for, our dry mills, is to blow away mill debris. So that's why we are not as invasive as some of the other mills on the market when it comes to air consumption. So the operating noise of this machine is just like the 52D at 70 decibels. It is quite a bit heavier at 231 pounds and it accepts the same size pucks, the 98.5 millimeter in diameter puck. 10 millimeters in height would be the minimum for a puck that the material adapter can hold, and the maximum in height would be 35 millimeters. So we talked a little bit about the material adapters. One of the great things about changing from some of the clamping systems we had in the past to this uh, material adapter is if you had a 52D in your production and then you increase the size of your business, now you have, uh, you require more bandwidth to produce your work. You add a 52 DCI for that unmanned production that can run overnight. So each of these mills is gonna come with six of these material adapters. Now these two material adapters, these, these 12 material adapters rather, are interchangeable between each machine. It's easy to stay organized, and keep production moving. So when it comes to support with Roland, uh, when you purchase your mill, you're automatically upon shipping gonna activate a one year warranty on that piece of equipment. Now when that piece of equipment is installed at your location and it's up and running, it is your responsibility and your dealers to make sure that machine gets registered on our website. As soon as you register that machine and its serial number, uh, it activates the second year of warranty. So two years of warranty on a Roland mill when it's registered. So that warranty covers all parts, but excludes accessories. That excludes tools, any sort of consumables like the collet. Um, the spindle would be considered a, a consumable as well. But in that two year period, we do cover one free spindle replacement inside of that two year warranty. If you had such a high production, you exceeded the life of, a, of your second spindle, there would not be a free spindle provided uh, at that time. So one free spindle replacement inside of that two year warranty period. Yearly service contracts are available. So for every one of our mills, we do have a service contract uh, that you could extend up to five years. So after your two years, you could add an additional three to cover you up to five years. And these are available through your dealer. Uh, they would cover, again, uh, travel, having somebody on site, parts, and the labor. But now, for what everyone has come here for, we are going to talk about the time reduction kits for removable venture. So why did Roland come out with a, a new TRK kit? What was the need? So we're seeing a lot of things change in the industry. There's no doubt about that, whether it's printing dentures, milling RPDs, uh, everything's changing and it's changing quickly. So with the volume of mills that we have out in the market, we wanna give our users the flexibility and the openness to be able to do these digital workflows without necessarily having to buy a whole new piece of equipment or most importantly, have to change their materials. That's why we think that the TRK system is so important 
So what the TRK system does, it's a cost-effective uh, custom material development to, pr to create your own discs. So instead of having to purchase your own materials, your own pre-made pre uh, denture-based pucks, now you can actually manufacture them inside of your location as you need them. Simplified tooth setting. So with some of the, the workflows out there today, there is some adjusting required when you go to loot your denture teeth, whether they be card teeth, printed teeth, milled teeth, uh, into the sockets of the, of the denture base. There is some adjusting, which can be very, very time consuming. Uh, I have worked with a lab locally who was not using the TRK system. And at times, uh, with their digital denture production, it could take them up to 45 minutes to get those teeth seated into those sockets. Faster turnaround times for the customer. So once you have your denture designed from your design system, whether it be three shape or exocat or whatever it may be, uh, and you produce that SPL file, the production times are very, very short. So you can go ahead and you can manufacture a final high quality denture in about six hours of time. So we've improved the milling technology to, uh, to make these milling operations faster. In the past, something like this, a very large plastic acrylic PMMA uh, type milling job and a 30 millimeter puck could take potentially six hours, simply just too long. It didn't make a lot of sense. So there was no way that people were gonna uh, adopt this workflow at those times. So what we did is we created some new milling strategies uh, in partnership with Millbox Sim System, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. And they've implemented a new tool in the system. So the tool that they've implemented is a flat end two millimeter tool which does the reduction, the bulk reduction, uh, the beginning procedures of the milling job uh, very, very quickly because it's a larger tool with a flat surface. It can remove more material and create less heat than a ball end tool that's essentially taking smaller bites out of the material. So we've improved the milling technology that we're using uh, between strategy and tools. It's a cleaner workflow. So no longer do you have to do all these analog procedures uh, hands on. Uh, now it's going to be simple. You're milling two pieces. You're milling the denture base. You're milling the teeth, and then you're going to loot the two together. So simple, cleaner, faster. So it's a long-term restoration. Uh, what that means is these are materials that your lab has probably been using for a long period of time. Uh, it's not something new. It's not a new print resin. Uh, it's something that you're confident in and that your technicians are familiar working with or repairing. Simple post-production adjustments. There's no alcohol baths. It's simply removing your two pieces from the puck, uh, fitting them together, creating some minor mechanical retention, and uh, curing and polishing. So very simple post-production uh, adjustments, which we will cover in, in better detail. So let's talk about the TRK kit itself. So the kit is going to come, uh, we can see in the top left here, the full arch silicone molds. It's going to come with six of those molds. It's also going to come with six silicone plates, which are meant uh, to put in between your molds if you're stacking in them inside of a pressure pot uh, to cure or polymerize your acrylic. The kit also comes with your first two millimeter flat end carbide burr. So that is the burr that would be implemented into this workflow that you would need to get the milling times that we're going to be talking about. Uh, the mold tips, which would allow for your poured puck to be fixed to your material adapter. It's going to come with a bag of 50 of those. And it's going to come with three TRK fixtures. So this TRK fixture is what your poured puck would fit inside of. And that would simulate the diameter of a 98 millimeter puck inside of your material adapter. And last but not least, a leveling spatula. So the big question is, what do you need to be able to get up and running? Obviously, you need a Roland 52 D mill. Um, if you have a 51, unfortunately, this workflow is not going to work for that machine because of the clamping system that's required. So the 52 D, the 52 DC, or the 52 DCI would be able to accept the TRK system. So uh, outside of that, you're going to need the Millbox software to go ahead and calculate these milling jobs. And then you're going to need a scale, uh, measuring cup, mixing bowl, vibrating pad, and pressure pot. The basic things that you're already using inside of a laboratory, which I'm sure the majority of you already have. 
So very simple. The big question is when we talk about this, which material should I use? So with this system today, we, are, we have approved uh, this for use with portable acrylics. So some of the materials that I have worked with uh, and have seen uh, pass our test and be tested is GC Nature Krill, which I have worked with extensively and have had very, very good results with. Uh, Keystone Sledgehammer uh, and also Henry Shine Z10 Portable Acrylic uh, are some options that you would have as well. So it has to be a portable acrylic. It's not yet approved for microwavable or a heat cure. So this does have to be portable acrylic. The next piece of the puzzle is obviously going to be uh, tooth material. So you have a couple of options here. You can use something like a Zerlux Temp PMMA or a Zerlux Multi Temp, which is a multi-layer PMMA or card teeth. So the important thing about selecting your PMMA uh, is obviously aesthetics. Do you want to spend a little more and get the aesthetics out of the multi-layer teeth or the solid tooth shade? Um, the other important piece of this is DCL PMMA, dual cross-link material. This is important that you choose a PMMA that is DCL uh, to make sure that it stands up to the wear required of a denture tooth. So Zerlux Temp, Zerlux Multi Temp are approved for five years of use by the FDA for intraoral use as a denture tooth. So these are great materials to choose. You can also choose card teeth. Uh, to, to proceed with that workflow, you would obviously need to make sure you have the library of the tooth, uh, the, the tooth company that you're gonna use, uh, whether it be Colzer or whoever it might be, you have to have that inside of your design system. So that has to be inside of your design system to make sure that your fits are gonna be accurate inside of the socket. We want minimal adjusting. Uh, in my experience working with the GC Nature Krill in the production laboratory here that I uh, work with in Connecticut, they have used the Zerlux Temp and the Multi Temp in their production. And when using GC Nature Krill and the Zerlux together, their fits are extremely accurate. They do not require any adjusting whatsoever, which is completely different from the workflow they used in the past. They essentially drop right in uh, and they're up and running, you know, creating mechanical retentions and looting the two pieces together very quickly. So how does, how does this flow? The biggest question I get when I talk to people about this, whether they call me or it's at a show, is porosity concerns or bubbles inside of the pucks. Um, yes, obviously that's going to be a concern. If you're pouring quickly, recklessly, just like pouring a model, which I'm sure all of you have done and you know how to pour a model without getting bubbles in it. Uh, if you pour quickly and don't pay attention to what you're doing, yes, it's very possible that you could get bubbles. Uh, but in my experience, having experience working in a model and dye department for a, a long time, um, I have had no issues with pouring these pucks on my own using a vibrating pad. Uh, all the bubbles come to the top. Any small bubbles that you may see would be right at the very top of the puck. You would know they were there. You would have no surprises inside of the actual puck itself. Now, if you were to go ahead and dump a whole bunch of material into the mold at one time, having it fold over itself without vibrating it, sure, there is a potential for some bubbles to be inside of that. But I'm sure that anybody pouring these would be as careful as possible. One thing that I will point out, uh, when you are pouring your own puck, there is a slight learning curve with your first one or two pucks. For me, it took two pours to get the perfect puck. Uh, what we saw is after the shrinkage occurred, when we polymerized our, our pucks that we were manufacturing, we had a slight concave effect on the top. So this would be fine if you were doing a denture base that was maybe 20 millimeters in height that would never come into play. But if you had something that was really pushing the limits of the height of that mold, which is 25 millimeters in height, uh, let's say it's 24.5 millimeters and you had a concave surface on the top, that could cause some concern. So you just wanna be very careful. You wanna make sure that you fill your mold just to the very top, uh, just so it looks like it's going to overflow. That way once you polymerize and you you see the shrinkage occur, you'll have a nice level, full 25 millimeter puck. So while we're talking about the 25 millimeter uh, molds, I will say that we do recognize that there is a need 
for some other heights of silicone mold. Uh, whether it be a 20 or a 30, it is two options that we're looking into currently. We do not have them available today, but it's, it is something that uh, we do recognize as a need. Uh, if you do have a larger arch, a higher vault, you need that 30 millimeter, or if you have something under 20 millimeters, maybe a lower uh, denture that can fit in that 20, why not save material when you can, right? So once we go ahead and pour, you're gonna go ahead and polymerize. And at that point, you're gonna take your puck that you've manufactured, and you're going to put it into your material adapter. At this point, you're ready to go over to the machine, place it inside, and start your milling job. So let's talk about milling time. So now that we're at the mill, we have our puck ready to go, and we're placing it inside of the machine. So a high quality, uh, if you're paying top dollar for a pre-manufactured denture puck, it can be well over $100 for one puck, which you would only get one case out of, right? So now if you're using something more affordable on the lower side of the scale, it could be right around that $65 mark. So just your denture base for one case would be around $65. Now, I did the ROI here based off of the GC Nature Curl that I used. and the cost analysis that I did on this to pour the one puck, the cost of that with the monomer and the powder together was $21.42 as a whole to be able to produce a digital denture. Now, the nice thing about uh, this flexibility is not only is it a material you're comfortable with, but for a material like GC Nature Krill, you also have seven shades available to you. So you're not stuck with maybe one or two print resins or Maybe a company's not manufacturing every shade they have available when they're uh, pre-manufacturing these 98 millimeter pucks. So the cost uh, is a third of what it would cost you to buy a pre-manufactured 98 millimeter disc for a denture base. And you're also creating them on demand. You have the flexibility and openness of choosing any pourable acrylic that you're comfortable with. So obviously, depending on what you choose, I'm sure you can find something a little more expensive for a pourable acrylic, as well as something a little more cost effective. So um, the GC Nature Krill per puck is $21.42. Milling times. So the milling times for a full denture base, like the ones you see here uh, in this photo, which are from the lab that I worked with here locally, the denture bases on average are two hours and 30 minutes. So once we've completed our denture base, obviously we're gonna put our PMMA puck inside of the mill and we're gonna go ahead and mill out our arch of teeth, however many that may be. Now, if we're making um, a set of dentures that maybe only has eight, 10 dentures, it could be quite different if you're making a denture that has 12 teeth. Um, so there's some flexibility there as far as milling times uh, on the PMMA arch. If you're milling teeth that are a high uh, the height is, let's say, 14 to 15 millimeters in the maximum height, and you're using a 20 or a 25 millimeter disc, there's going to be a lot of waste. There's going to be a lot of extra milling time that you did not need to utilize or that you did not need to spend uh, when you could have used maybe a 16 millimeter puck or something quite shorter. So there is some variables involved that could bring your milling times down quite drastically. So the total milling time that we're seeing for teeth and arch is about four hours. So is this as fast as printing? No, we're not, we're not promoting it as such. But what we are promoting is the ability to use traditional denture materials to complete these workflows in a digital way. So again, four hours is what we're seeing for a complete denture to be manufactured. And now if, you're, if you have uh, already a 52 DCI, you can go ahead and load your machine at night before you leave the office with four denture pucks and two PMMA pucks. When you get in in the morning, you will have four dentures and teeth ready to be removed from the pucks, processed, looted together, and polished. So with the DCI, this workflow is, is right where it needs to be. Uh, there's nobody in the laboratory changing out pucks. You're not paying anybody overnight to be there for a third shift. So it's unsupervised, unmanned production. So what is the fabrication process like? 
So the denture process is going to start just like any other. Um, and in this picture here, this is an actual, this is the one of the dentures that we created from the GC Nature Krill uh, with Zerlux Multi Temp PMMA. And this is just a simple polish. And we'll talk about the fabrication process of this of this uh, this denture we see here. So like any other denture case, we're going to take the first impression. Uh, we can go ahead and make a custom tray. We can have the doctor do a bite block for us or a wax rim, giving us uh, all the information we need to go ahead with the next step in our denture. Uh, the new software for something like a three shape, it's going to be able to scan in that wax rim or bite block and give you the ability to uh, have your vertical and be able to process that information in the design software. So the more time that your doctor spends contouring that wax rim or bite, uh, the better it's gonna be for you in the software. So once we have all of our scan and design, um, we can go ahead, finish our design, create our STL. We're gonna take our STL, we're going to nest it in our mailbox software. We're gonna go ahead and send it over to the mill. We come in in the morning, we have all of our dentures ready to go. At that point, we would remove both the teeth and the denture bases from the puck. We would go ahead and create mechanical retentions in the bottom of those teeth to really give us uh, mechanical retention uh, to really make sure that these hold together. So when we're talking about mechanical retention, you have a couple of different options here when we're milling teeth out. You can mill them individually. You can mill them into uh, three unit segments, or you can mill them as a full arch. So anytime we're connecting teeth like this, it's going to give them more strength. There's less chance of a, uh, of a tooth uh, breaking loose. So we can create that full arch, which is going to help with our retention overall. So we create our mechanical retentions. We're going to head, go ahead and bond our teeth. So we're going to use some of the material that we poured the puck with, which in this case is our GC Nature Krill. We're gonna mix a very small amount we're gonna place it inside of the sockets that we milled. We're going to place the teeth inside, squish it together. Anything or the anything uh, that comes out, the excess material, we're gonna go ahead and wipe away. And then we would go ahead and polymerize that acrylic to create the bond. Uh, some of the acrylics are light curable. So that streamlines your whole process and simplifies things if you can find something that is a light curable acrylic. So at that point, our teeth are uh, bonded to our denture base. We now have the ability to contour or stipple. That's optional. Uh, if you wanna do it, you can go ahead and do it. Up to you. There is some concern initially that I had from a lot of denture technicians about the space between the denture base and the teeth itself. So there is a small gap, there would be a small gap there once the acrylic that we used as a glue cures. It's gonna pull back slightly and leave a a slight gap. Over time, we can get a black line, bacteria can build up. So what we recommend is using a clear flowable composite uh, in the CEJ. So go around uh, before you go ahead to pumice and polish, fill in those gaps all the way around, uh, you know, tap it, let it flow nice and smooth, fill in those gaps. And if you look very closely here, you can see that uh, we have done that on this case to prevent any black lines from developing uh, with bacteria building up. So once we've done that, we can go ahead, pumice and polish as we normally would. And as you can see here in this picture, we have a very aesthetic milled denture. Um, so very, very nice result. Uh, the patient was very happy with this. So the big question that everybody has is why mill when I can print? And we've already touched on a lot of these bullet points already, but we'll go, we'll go through it again. Number one is acrylic shading options and acrylic choices. You can choose whatever type of portable acrylic uh, that you would like to use. So as long as it's portable, you can pour it into these silicone molds and we advise you to stay with the manufacturer of the acrylics uh, during procedures. So we don't ask you to change anything. The only thing differently that you're doing is pouring the material into the actual mold itself. From there, if it calls for a pressure pot, Put it in the pressure pot. Follow the exact instructions of the acrylic that you are using. And again, it's open to any acrylic systems. We want our users, we, Roland is not a material company. We do not want to push you in any direction of you have to use this zirconia, you have to use this PMMA, you have to use this acrylic. 
we want to give the users the flexibility to choose what really works for them and what their doctors and the patients really prefer. So we give you the solution, we give you the equipment and the workflows to go into it and give you the option of choosing the materials that you like and that your technicians prefer. So open, that's a big thing at Roland. Ease of use for technicians. That's a really important piece of this puzzle. Anytime, uh, I don't care what it is, where it is, people don't really love change. If you're a ceramist and somebody comes in overnight, throws away all of your porcelain and replaces it with a new brand and says, this is what you're using now, it's going to disrupt your workflow. Uh, it doesn't feel the same. It doesn't fire the same. You have to change your cycles. Maybe there's some different shrinkage occurring. We want to keep the materials that the technicians are used to in their hands. Uh, this is not an attempt to uh, talk badly about printing in any way. Printing has a very big future in dental. There's no doubt about it. We recognize it, and we think that there's you know a lot of ways for us to work together, uh, printing and milling in workflows like this. We want to make sure that the material is repairable, so it has to be easily repairable, like a standard denture acrylic would be, or giving you the ability to reline it doctor and patient peace of mind. So if you're working with a doctor for the past 15 years, you've been providing him uh, dentures over and over again. He has patients that you've probably made multiple dentures for. Um, now, you've bought a printer, you're printing dentures, and the patient needs a new denture, and all of a sudden you send them something that is a print resin. Now, a lot of these print resins, you don't have the shading options. There's not a whole fleet of material and color selections that you could use. Uh, they're all very standard. A lot of them translucent if you're not customizing them with a composite or a staining kit after. So there's gonna be a noticeable difference to the doctor when you're handing them a traditional denture with traditional materials or a print resin. They're gonna be able to tell the difference. Uh, also, if you hand that to the patient, they're gonna look at it and say, this doesn't look like my old denture. Um, they probably wouldn't necessarily be happy with it. So by keeping the materials in the workflow that we've already used, we're keeping the doctor and patient happy. Again, continuous unattended production. The DCI can produce dentures for you while you're home, you're sleeping, you come in in the morning. Uh, maybe you're a Crown and Bridge lab who is very proficient with design software and you wanna find a new revenue stream and you already have a DCI. So that gives you the ability to go ahead and buy the TRK kit, start producing dentures on your own. So it's not, uh, removable technicians become harder to find every day. Everywhere you look, you know, if it's a posting in a magazine, it's, a, it's people looking for removable technicians. So a Crown and Bridge Lab, you can grab uh, the TRK kit and very simply in your design software, be able to design dentures and you're gonna be able to mill them overnight. During the day, you're milling your standard zirconia work while you center it overnight. So you're not interrupting your production, you're just utilizing your machine differently with a new workflow. The biggest part of this is versatility. And this is, you know, obviously a little bit of humor, but you know, when I'm challenged on uh, this as a, as a practical workflow, people are obviously comparing it to denture and we understand that. But the big question is, how long does it take for your printer to, to print a zirconia crown? Probably a very, very long time because it can. So the idea behind the rolling mills and these workflows is you're producing crown and bridge work out of zirconia. You're producing your all on four restorations. You're producing appliances, uh, bite splints, and RPDs, millable RPDs, metal free RPDs, flexibles, whether it's uh, Zerlux acetyl or, or VisiClear materials. These are becoming more and more popular every single year. And last but not least, denture. So all of these workflows are able to be processed through one machine. That's the big piece of this, versatility of the equipment that you have. So why not both? There's, as I said before, there's no reason you can't use both. If you already have a printer and you already have a rolling mill, you're trying to navigate this maze of digital denture or digital removable, there's absolutely space for both of these to be used together. Go ahead and print a try-in. You can print it very quickly, send it to the doctor, try it in, make adjustments, and in your scanning software, 
you're able to scan in that try-in with adjustments made to it and incorporate that in the original design. Make those required adjustments and then go ahead and produce your final, which could be your milled denture out of a poured acrylic and milled teeth. And here is an example of that workflow. So here we have that finished denture, the puck with the milled teeth, and our milled denture base. So none of this would be possible if it wasn't for Millbox uh, producing the, the calculation process in the CAM. So Millbox took the time, partnered with us to develop this piece to go ahead and put that block that we're pouring inside of the software and also produce the nesting steps to go ahead and produce this, uh, produce this final restoration. So the modules, if you already have Millbox, for you to download this and be able to operate with this today, you would need to have a Millbox version of software that's 2018 or newer. So if you have a Roland, you have Millbox, and you have a 2018 or newer license, you can go on to the Roland website, you can download the module, as we call it, which you will see here shortly in our demonstration, and go ahead and utilize this workflow once you have the TRK kit itself. So uh, I suggest that you reach out to your dealer like Zon, uh, like Zon's support team, and have them help you with this process to make sure the installer goes properly. But uh, if you already have a 2018 or newer, these are, these are available for you to download today. So a couple of nesting tips for that we recommend when you're nesting these denture bases. The first thing that you're going to do is you obviously want to make sure that your denture base fits inside of the, the, the digital block. So what you're seeing on your screen here. So we're going to use our simple tools circled in red to position it, make sure it's aligned properly. We are going to make some slight modifications to our support pins. We're going to add a support pin. We're going to choose the square shape for the, the support pin. And then last but not least, we're going to increase the diameter of those supports from two millimeters, which is a standard zirconia uh, support pin, up to four millimeters of diameter. Uh, that's going to allow us to use less supports and reduce the finishing time uh, for you taking it out of the puck itself. And last but not least is positioning those supports on your restoration itself. Uh, we recommend that you use about five support pins per case to make sure that the, the, the restoration, the denture base is secured inside of that, pot, that part um, during the milling operations. So with that, I'm gonna give you guys a really quick live demonstration of the, mil, uh, of the nesting procedure here. And then once we're done with this, we will open it up and I already see that there's a bunch of questions. So I will get to those right after this demonstration. So I'm just gonna make a quick change here. And I believe that everybody should be able to see my screen at this point. So I'll just give it one second to make sure everybody's refreshed. Okay, so on my screen, you can see the Millbox software. Let me see if I can hide this. There we go, perfect. All right, so this is our Millbox software, very simple interface. I wanted to start here because this is the final result that we would wanna see. And just so you know that we're really getting, talking about some accurate milling times. The milling time of this denture here is going to be 165 minutes. So we're looking at about two and a half hours of milling time. So I just wanted to show you that. But what we'll do is we will start a brand new job and take you through the whole process from start to finish so you can see how simple it really is. Okay, the first screen that's gonna come up when we choose a new job in our Millbox software is it's going to ask us what type of mill or what type of workflow we're going to be performing. So once I've downloaded the module from the Roland webpage and it's active in our 52 mill in our Millbox software, I'm gonna go down here to the bottom. This box will pop up for the 52D denture workflow. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose this as our option. Uh, it's automatically chosen PMMA as a material and what fixture we're using. So I'm gonna click the green check mark to 
to proceed to the next step. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and choose which file I'm going to be nesting, which here is that lower that I showed you uh, just a few minutes ago. So I'm going to add that to our screen. Bear with me on the times here. Uh, I'm using a standard laptop, nothing, nothing really high end uh, that I should be using for something like this to get those import times down. Sorry for the delay, guys. This is just a uh, an issue with my laptop not being up to snuff. There we go. Okay, there she is. So now it's asking us to choose the stock. So we're going to go ahead and choose a 25 millimeter stock. Quickly going to import that stock. Okay. So here, as I rotate, you can see we have our block. And I'm going to choose the design. And I have my neat tools here. So I can go ahead and very simply move it in any direction I want or rotate. I'm going to make sure we're centered. We have plenty of room around the border. And I'm going to make sure that we are not coming out of the puck in any way. Once I've done that, I'm going to add my supports, like I described. I'm going to change them to square and increase them to about four millimeters. In this case, I am going to go with five supports, two on the inside. Two on the outside. And then finally one in the front. So in my experience with milling these, I've milled over 20 of these uh, already and going with five of these supports at this size is safe and it does not fall out of uh, the puck itself during the milling procedure. So I'm gonna click the check mark. I have my supports. I'm going to go ahead and click Start Mill, telling the system that I'm ready to start my calculations. Now, while this is uh, loading our next step, you'll notice this purple line. Uh, a lot of you who are already doing CAD CAM are probably pretty familiar with this. This would be uh, our margin file or our PTS file. I can't tell you how important it is for you to utilize these PTS files when you're doing this workflow to make sure that your, the fit of your teeth and your denture bases are very exact and passive so you're not doing a lot of adjusting. So make sure your PTS file is inside of the folder uh, that your STL file is. So we're going to get this window that pops up. It's asking us if our output is from a three shape or an exocad. In this case, it is. Uh, so I'm going to check that box. Anything else you would check other. Secondary anatomy would be if you wanted to use some smaller tools to mill some texturing detail. Uh, but obviously, this is going to add more time to the milling job. So I'm going to leave it as is. And the very last step is it's going to tell me which tools it's going to use. It's basically giving me an opportunity to confirm that my tools are inside the machine in the proper positions. So a one millimeter tool inside of slot one, a two millimeter rounded tool inside of slot two, and then the tool that we described, uh, the flat end tool for the bulk reduction, would be housed in slot number nine. 
So I click OK. Calculation procedure uh, moves forward. Once it's complete, we can go ahead and start the mill. So very, very simple, uh, very, very quick workflow. So I'm going to go back to my original screen. And end here. All right. So that's it for the presentation. I realize that there's a ton of questions, so I'm going to start kind of going through these here and see how many of them I can answer. If there's anything I can't answer for you today, um, I will work with Katie to get your information and reach out to you. So let's take a look here and see what we have back from the very beginning. How does the strength, uh, this is from Carrie Evans, how does the strength compare on the TRK? to a pre-manufactured puck, I'm assuming we're talking about. Um, it would, I would say that the pre-manufactured pucks, some of them are probably um, a high impact heat cured. Uh, I'm not familiar with the process today that they are manufacturing them in, so it depends on what the material actually is. Uh, the material strength of the poured acrylic that you're using would not change just because you're using it inside of the TRK system. You're curing it the same way. The only difference is, again, you're pouring it inside of the silicone mold. So uh, hopefully that answers your question. If not, just uh, chime back in. Uh, have I tried Dense Fly Serona High Impact Portable Resin? Dave, no, I have not. But uh, slowly but surely, I am getting some, uh, some samples from other companies and doing some testing. So I would be would be happy to uh, you know try anything, and I'll, I'll I'll talk to you about that. So as of today, no, personally, I have not used it. But as long as it's portable, I'm pretty comfortable that it would work just fine. Uh, what is the name of that Noac Burr again? So I'm not sure what you mean by Noac Burr, but I'm assuming you're talking about the flat end tool, which I will get back to here. There we go. So the tool you're going to want is the ZRB100D tool, and that's the two millimeter flat end carbide. We do recommend that you use carbide tools uh, for this workflow. So whenever you're milling this, please use the carbides. What type of flowable composite do you recommend? So there's a variety of composites out on the market. In the testing that I've done in the actual cases we've completed with the lab I have locally, we have used uh, GC's Gradia. So a clear flowable composite that they have uh, would work just fine. Retail price. What is the retail price of the TRK kit? The TRK kit retails, uh, MSRP is for $1,245, and that is for everything we discussed, which is up on the screen now. Six of the molds, the base plates, one milling tool, the tips, three TRK fixtures, and the leveling spatula. So these are 25 millimeters in height, remember. Uh, again, as I stated, we do recognize that there might be a need for a larger silicone mold or even a smaller one, save material when possible. So if we do come out with those, those will be available for purchase individually. You cannot purchase these 25 millimeter silicone molds individually today. It would just be the six that are included inside of your kit. These TRK fixtures, maybe you want a 52 DCI for your removable department for RPDs and dentures. You could purchase those TRK fixtures individually. Okay, next question after retail price. What solution would we have to get a try and done if we do not have a printer? You could always mill, um, you could always mill something out of wax. Uh, it may mill quicker. Um, so you have some different options there. Uh, would we have to do a setup in wax and then scan it into the wax triangle. No, so a setup would not be required. You'd basically be completing that whole portion of the workflow in, uh, inside of the design software. However, it would be possible um, to go ahead and do that. If you had a setup, you could scan it in. There is an option inside of scan systems called what is called a copy mill. Uh, you could scan it in and kind of just duplicate it and then produce it, produce it digitally through the mill. Um, 
It would also be an option if somebody had a denture. Uh, maybe it was just older, it still fits well, and they want to replace it. You can go ahead and take that denture, scan it into your scanning system, and reproduce it with adjustments made. So that's called a copy mill feature. So you can scan in an existing denture from someone. Uh, is there the possibility to use heat cured resin with this kit? Today we do not have a solution for the heat cured resin, unfortunately. Uh, next, can the three millimeter toric ended tool be used uh, in this workflow. So the three millimeter tool is not written into the strategy today. There is a three millimeter flat end tool that is used for workflows like an RPD, a plastic flexible RPD. Um, in that scenario, a three millimeter tool is used today with the acrylic uh, milling for a denture base. It is not an option in the software. Let's see, is Millbox the only CAM software that works with the removable denture kit? Today, yes, that is the case. Millbox would be my suggestion for you to, to use for this workflow. Uh, it is tested and we know that it works, it's validated. Will a larger silicone mold be available? Uh, there is not one available today, but we again, we do recognize that it is something that we need to look into and uh, we hope to have one for you in the, in the near future. So some different sizes, again, maybe something slightly smaller and something larger. Can you use this kit with the DWX-52D? Yes, uh, you can use this kit with the 52D. Obviously, since it's a single puck machine, there would need to be somebody there to change out the pucks continuously, opposed to the DCI, which could run overnight while you have nobody in the laboratory. So the DCI would be the best solution for this workflow. Is there any issue with teeth coming out of the base after wearing the denture for so long? Bonding issues between the teeth and the base. So there aren't any escalations of this being a problem. One of the reasons is the, the denture base that we milled is the like material uh, that we're using in acrylic for as the glue. So the adhesive is the base. So when we create these mechanical retentions or diatorics, uh, it's going to help secure them. So we're getting a chemical as well as a mechanical bond. So we do not have any complaints of them popping off at this time. I described before that uh, we had the option of segmenting teeth into three tooth segments or doing a full arch. So when we do do them in larger groups, they're all working together to secure themselves to that base. So there is something to be said for doing segments or a full arch. And obviously it's quite a bit uh, less work when you can drop a whole arch in opposed to having to fit many segments in together. So there's something to be said for that. Let's see. Can you use any portable acrylic other than the ones you mentioned? Uh, yes, we obviously have not tested all of them, but anything that is a poured acrylic, we are comfortable with you using at this time. Uh, and as you see me, you know, um, feel free to reach out to me. I'm on the rolling user groups. You know, if you validate something, post it on there. Let everybody know, you know, share, share the knowledge with everyone. And as we validate and test different options, we will keep you in the loop as well by posting in those groups. Microwave compatible. So today, as I mentioned, no, it's not microwave compatible. It is something that I'm curious about and I've got a lot of questions about here recently. So it's something that I'm going to look into and uh, try on my own. So if I have an update for that, if anybody's on Facebook, join the Roland user group. And uh, it's a great wealth of knowledge, great community for everyone to work together, you know, troubleshoot things or issues that they might have or share some new solutions that they've come up with. So that's something I'm going to be testing. And uh, if I have an update for that, join that group and keep an eye out for it. And um, you'll see the update there. Any other questions, guys? That's the, uh, that's the end of the questions. Hopefully I was able to answer them in good enough detail, but uh, just in case I haven't, really quick, let me go back to my final slide here. 
and this is my contact information. So if you guys have additional questions, maybe there's something that I didn't get to or cover in enough detail for you, please feel free to, to shoot me an email or give me a call here. Uh, let's see, there are a couple more coming in. Can the mail send abroad? I'm not sure what you're referring to. Um, I think what you're saying is if you were to purchase here in the US and ship it to another country with a warranty still carry over. Um, ideally, that's not what we wanna see. It does create some service issues. So what we'd prefer to see happen is uh, if you're in South America, the Caribbean, please buy from our dealers in those areas or um, our Canadian dealers. Uh, if you're in the U.S., purchase from a U.S. dealer. And, uh, you know, we say this just to streamline everything and, you know, keep from any confusion from happening. We want to make sure that you're serviced and you have all the help that you need. So it's not something we would encourage, to be sure. But uh, again, guys, thank you for joining today. I know we went a little bit over here. I hope you gained some information, some insight on this workflow and how it compares to some other options out on the market. Uh, we're always here for questions. You know, if you have suggestions, please let us know and uh, reach out to your Zon rep for more information if this is something that you're interested in. But um, Zon, thank you. Katie, thank you for uh, putting this together for us. And I hope everybody has a great day. Thanks, Ian. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you.